is I did want to see Prime stay at Jackson State for the for the aspect of what happens when we build our own. Welcome to another MVP podcast. My name is Dale, and today we're talking about some people in the black community who think that Deion Sanders is doing wrong. Check this video out. As I mentioned, people are now kind of upset about seeing celebrities there, yeah. you know, when they feel like, hey, you know, you weren't there in the beginning or, you know, at least you weren't posting as you are now. What are your thoughts about being, people being upset, you know, about Yeah, I think up? it goes back to, you know, my, my standpoint and my stance, which is I did want to see Prime stay at Jackson State for the, for the aspect of what happens when we build our own. There's a, um, a song from Kanye West called All Falls Down. And this is what he says, and I think it kind of relays into this thing that I kept hearing. Because they made us hate ourselves and love their wealth. That's why Shorty's hollering where the ball is at. Drug dealers buy Jordans, crack head by crack, and a white man gets paid after all of that. Mm -hmm. That's something that I kind of am seeing in irony when I see like everyone going to Colorado, buying the merchandise, pulling up there. It's just like the fact that we don't own that they get paid after all that at the end. And that's why I was just like, man, if we kind of stay home and, and really kind of tune in for ourselves, how big that can impact us. So I think the conversation is, do we want black ownership or do we want black ascension, you know, to, to ascend to new heights? Like, and what does that look like? And I'm big on ownership because, you know, at the end of the day, someone can fire Dion. You know, someone could have fired Dion at Jackson State, but I also understand that the closest that we have to black ownership when it comes to HBCUs, because a lot of them aren't necessarily black owned institutions. Mm -hmm. It's um it's the closest because all the students are majority black and you know that hopefully the benefit of that school will impact those black students that predominantly go there. Yeah, I mean and I think we kinda discuss on this obviously like I, I have different views. Now mm -hmm. while I understand the importance of black ownership, I think there needs to be a mentality shift in our community because you mm -hmm. know I deal with a lot of black owned businesses and also, too, when you look at black-owned businesses, most of them are sole proprietor. They don't have employees. They're not really, right. you know. So there needs to be a mentality shift for us first. But also bet with your question of, like, you know, between ownership and ascension, I think we can have both. Mm -hmm. I think C and Dion, Dion may, has made it very clear. And, again, people read the headlines, but they don't actually read the details of it. He's been very clear of, like, hey, there aren't a lot of black coaches on that, that next level. And that's where his focus is. I don't think it has to be Dion's job to – oh, hey, okay, I'm going to take on a mission that I don't feel yeah. is for me. If that's not the lane that he's in, I don't think it's necessarily wrong. It's just different than what somebody else's purpose could be. But I don't think that's Deion Sanders' yeah, purpose. Yeah, um, in your report that you just made, you just said something about, like, Fox um, did a deal, mm -hmm. right, to what to cover their games. Yeah. And this the irony of even that. Because yeah. if you know the story of Fox, they use a lot of black sitcoms in the past to help build out that network. And I think, again... If we're people that understand that history repeats itself, we also want to be mindful about how he engages in those type of dealings when we don't own or control the space that we're dealing with. Mm -hmm. So the story with Fox is they eventually would get rid of those black shows. Um, and Living Color was a great example. Keenan Ivory Wayans, in effect, was their Dion in the scheme of things. He was a star. He was creating um, in Living Color and was able to do well for him. Over time, they wanted to have their control and they were able to flex that because they own that. And uh, uh, Keenan would end up, end up leaving um, in Living Color. Right. So it's just those things that um, I do agree with you both are needed. Mm -hmm. But the ones that do go ahead and decide to ascend in that space, just be mindful. Don't drink the Kool-Aid too heavy. But I, I don't think Dion's drinking the Kool-Aid. Like, Dion on those big stages are, like, mentioning, like, hey, we're having black this and black that. We're seeing, you know, and, and making all these records. I don't think he's drinking the Kool-Aid. I think... People are projecting because we do. We're hurt. We're hurt people. We've mm -hmm. had experiences that you know nobody needs to you know should experience. So I, I completely understand that and have empathy there. But specifically for this topic, one sports doesn't work that way. Like you said, he can the same way he can get fired at Colorado State, he can get fired at Jackson State. He even mentioned when he went on the Pivot podcast that resources wasn't the only reason why he left Jackson State. It was the ideology, and these are his words, not mine. The ideology, the thought process, and the forward thinking that they just couldn't come in agreement with. So sometimes we, just, we want to place people somewhere because we're projecting what we feel we would do. But my challenge would then be we're so quick to like, oh, Dion, you do it. Dion, you should do this. And it's like, 
you have a million people commenting on social media about what Dion should do instead of those million people coming together. So then let me ask, because you brought up, you know, people, and, and I brought up as well, like people being upset. Do you think it's wrong for, and I'm gonna put in quotations, do you think it's wrong for people to jump on the bandwagon, if, if that's what we're gonna call it? I don't think it's completely wrong. I think it just exposes kind of like one's character or just like where they're at with things, um, particularly like celebrities. But at the end of the day, people like winners. You know, it's cool to support what's cool. And I think that um, it just exposes the lack of leadership that we might have in our community and how often we look at entertainers as leaders. You know, um, Dick Gregory himself expressed that we shouldn't look at entertainers as leaders. And so to see Wu-Tang up there being leaders that they are, that people perceive them as, as like people that create thought and really push for change, I think it kind of shows that, hey, these people are like everyday people too. Mm -hmm. You know, they can get caught up in the hype. Yeah. yeah. And I think too, I mean, I think it just it, it exposes because for me I appreciate like taking away the pride. Let's say like you weren't supporting Dion in the beginning, you decide like okay, hey, you know what? You know he showed me different. It shows that maybe everyone's not and not even maybe not even maybe everyone's not a pioneer. Everybody's not that person to go seek things before it pops. You know what I'm saying? Like how back in the day they would go to comedy clubs and club and stuff. You know, sit in the back and see that talent before they pop. We don't have a lot of pioneers, but I I think they're still leaders when you can say, hey, I didn't like it at first, but now I see, let me set my side of pride. And I mean, excuse me, set my pride aside and actually show support. So I think showing support is showing support. We're all bandwagoners. Like if you're gonna jump on a bandwagon, jump on, especially if it's supporting a black man. Yeah, and I understand that. Yeah. But again, my point is like who benefits from the bandwagon, right? When we have our best um, allies, resources, celebrities mm -hmm. piling into a white, predominantly white school um, that's again the the issue that I have is like okay the predominantly black team you know how do you but that's across the board right and that makes me think about I wonder what Dion is trying to prove because if it's about you know seeing black people dominate in other spaces that they haven't been invited to I think that's already been proven you know yeah. that's not breaking news like we know that we're great people we know that every time we get opportunity we turn it up every single time which is why they probably you know have pushed us away and kept us out of certain doors because look at uh, the young lady that just won the U.S. T tennis open, right? Coco. Look at LeBron James in terms of like what his representation is. Look at the best black comedians or excuse me, the best comedians of all time are going to be predominantly black comedians. We're built to dominate. Yeah. You know, so I just wonder what Dion's goal is because you were trying to make a point about this predominantly all black school, I mean school football team, mm -hmm. but my thought process is black people dominate football. Like, like what, what shift is that gonna kind of create for us when we already are winners? For sure, and I, I don't think, well, one, I don't think anybody has to wonder what Dion's goals is because again, Dion has been very clear in what he wants to do. Like, yes, first let me say, I think, not even, I think we know, that's, that's what we do on every level, obviously. But Dion has made it very clear that there aren't black coaches on those next levels, and that's what he's, and he's not proving anything to himself. Dion knows, it's very clear. Dion knows that, you know, he's the man. Dion knows what he's capable of. Dion knows what his team, team is capable of. It's more like, okay, well, let me show you because the way that business works, and you know this, is numbers matter. Okay, let me show you the numbers. The way he talked about, okay, well, now at Colorado, how they're able to put those views um, in front of you and say like, okay, hey, this, this shows you what we're doing. But for Dion and what he said he wants to do, there aren't black coaches on that next level, right? So it's like, okay, well, let me show you when you put a black coach in that space, what I'm able to do at a school that was not winning. The, in just the two games, they've already won more than they did last, you know, the season before Dion came on in Colorado. So, okay, you put a black coach here, the same way we see now more black quarterbacks in the NFL. When once before they used to look at black quarterbacks as like, oh, they're not smart enough to be able to hold that space. But then when you start seeing more black quarterbacks in those spaces that are smart, athletic, and able to play the game at an efficient level on that level, now look at the NFL. There are black quarterbacks all across right. on teams. So he, he has, I don't think you have to wonder what Dion's goal is or, or wonder what Dion is trying to prove. Dion has already made it very clear there aren't black coaches on the next level. And he's, he's taken it up to show you like, okay, here's what a black coach can do. This, and I'm sure he'll go um, to the NFL. This question, because I think it represents the totality of the conversation. Yeah. Um, what is more impactful, black ownership or integration? I think in the times that we're in now, I think you need both. Mm -hmm. Because, and as I mentioned earlier, ownership is nice. It's, I, don't, I don't want it to be like, 
oh, hey, I like this company because it's just black owned. Yeah. Like I want, is there longevity in here? How far can we take this? Do we really have the knowledge and the mentality to keep this company going and growing? Right. But at the same time, because of the times that we're in, we're already integrated. I don't know if we'll ever be segregated again, if that's where we're taking it. But also too, in these integrated spaces, we should also be able to support people that are ascending there because everybody is not made for ownership. Everybody's not just like, you know, there's this culture of like, oh, be an entrepreneur. Everybody's not made for that space. Correct. And that's OK. I don't think black people should, you know, it's, oh, only black ownership across the board. Like we're in America. It's not a country that was created for us, yeah. created by us, but not a country that's created. For yeah. Us. Some people say that, you know, integration was used to disarm us. Um, in order to maybe control us a bit more, yeah. right? You have Tulsa and how they were doing a great job for themselves Could and only them. Choice, yeah. And then ultimately they were to get, um, you know, the, the city or town burnt down. Yeah. So it's kind of like it exposes that level of it. That's kind of why I at least speak on my position of like, I see the importance of like doing for self, right? Absolutely. Diddy was just at Invest Fest and expressing that, that no one's coming to save black people. And Correct. I think we have to really kind of understand that so that when there are businesses in position to at least add to the swimming, if this was like a water analogy for us to swim more, then support those businesses. You know, I hope that people continue to support us um, because we are swimming through the waves, mm -hmm. swimming through the tide. And ultimately, our goal is to help bring others along with us. Yeah, you know? absolutely. No, I, I definitely am for that. Um, I stumbled upon this video you know a few days ago and um i don't know what to think about it because as you see he talks about black ownership versus like integration and this is an idea that goes way back you know to when martin luther king and malcolm x you know were walking around and trying to you know lead black people in different directions obviously uh, martin luther king was for integration and malcolm x was for you know black ownership the black sovereignty all right um now in this case some people are not happy that Deion sanders is finding success all right in white schools and predominantly white schools all right he he apparently there are so many jackson state fans and former students current students who are angry you know that he brought all these celebrities to the colorado games when none of them showed up to the jackson state games when he was a coach there it's almost like they're saying that you know dion is having success in another city and not really helping out his own i don't know what to think about this it can be looked at like many different ways you know i don't know if you guys have an opinion on it write it in the comments you know i think that i I'm, I'm more side with the the girl who was speaking here where you need to have your own 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 your own thing but also integrate as well you know that can be done i don't think that it's black and white i don't think that you should you know pick one side oh let's we're just going to integrate with everybody or we're just going to go and do our own thing everybody is al almost assimilated anyways so if you want to do something for hbcu or you want to do something, you know, at Alabama or TCU or or where, wherever, you know, I think that it's it's OK. And um, and you're not really you're not robbing like, you know, black culture. If if you if you have success like at Alabama or Cincinnati or where or, or Georgia, right? you don't have to go to an HBCU. It's, it's considering, especially considering how much Dion already did for Jackson State. I mean, they're on national TV already. People, I wouldn't even know who not, what um, Jackson State would be if not for Dion Sanders. So he already made a mark, all right, on an HBCU, for an HBCU, and got them, you know, new facilities, everything like that, which it, which they would not have if he was not there. So it comes the question, you know, like. How much do you really want him to do? And why should his impact, you know, really stay at one level when it could be at like a national level, which he's on Fox every Saturday. 
I mean, they're changing, they're flexing game so that his game could be on national TV at 12, 12 noon. That would never, I don't think that would happen for Jackson State. All right, three weeks in a row. And uh, so, so I think you do a little bit here, you do a little bit over there. I think that's that's all right. And he, he put in his time already for Jackson State. All right, he did his thing over there already. So I don't think I don't think that people should come down on him. Definitely not. You know, so I'm not. So I don't agree with that. What that brother was saying, like on the in that video. But I'm more in line with what the girl says, and I'm more in line with you know you you help out here and you can help out another place. So that's about it. So write in the comments what your opinion might be. You know, if you have one. So until next time.